Hey everybody, before we get started, just remind you this episode is brought to you by our patrons like Adam DeHarp, Ahaiko Comics, Architect 10, Blacklist G, Carlos Qua, Jeremy Vasquez, Jonathan Sandoval, Kylie Denton, Legendary Boss Hunter, Liam Kessler, Regent Raptor, Rogue Robin, Shawnee P, some guy named Bob, Soda Son over 2 for Cyber Twenty Three and Zach Reed. If you like what we do want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies. It helps us out. Thank you for support, everybody. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Talk After You Wanted, the show where Lee... Lee? <laughs> I made a pun. Freudian slip, guys. Hey, it's a show where we let you know if you want to roll a five-star. And, uh, spoilers, we're talking about Lee Shuen Assassin today. Yay. He's a story lock, but also he's brand new, so you can't roll him even if you completed that story already. Which I did, because I'm doing the event right now, which requires you to complete that story. Anyway, we'll, we'll cycle back to that when we talk about campaigns and stuff. So... I don't really feel much a need for preamble. I think this will actually be a slightly more compact wanted than we usually do, other than the fact that Omega's going to have to struggle with Chinese names again. Curse you, anglicization. But anyway, if this is your first time watching Let's Talk FGO Wanted, this is a sub-show we do, separate from our podcast, Let's Talk FGO. It comes out every week. Check it out. It's great. Uh, this show is about five stars, or sometimes four stars, and sometimes three stars. But any anyway, it's about rare units that you may or may not be considering investing resources in. I break it down into four major sections. We're going to talk about a unit's real-life history or folklore. History, in this case, because Li Xuan is a historical personage who actually existed. We'll talk about their fate lore, with a capital L. We'll talk about their mechanics, a big draw for why people want to roll certain units. And we will be, of course, talking about their rarity. Not their star rarity, but how frequently their rate-ups are, because that can really make or break whether or not you want to roll a unit right now if they've got a big rate-up, like, just this one time, or if it's going to be a while, you know? So, is there any other preamble to do? Uh, no, I think we got everything in hand. Uh, just a reminder that normally, you know, being a story-locked five-star, you can only roll Li Xuan in the story banner if you've completed the requisite story, Sin, Lost Belt 3. And, uh, of course, you can uh, still get him on rate-ups, though, even if you haven't completed the story, just it's uh, less common. All right, yeah, no point in dawdling. I hate to dawdle. So let's talk about real-life history. So... Interestingly enough, at least in English, um, there aren't a lot of details about Li Xuan. We know he existed. He was born in 1864 and uh, died in 1934 in uh, Taiwan, the place that can't be named. <laughs> so he was a historical real martial artist. Uh, he lived quite a long time, approximately age 71 or 72, depending on his exact birth date, which I don't believe we know specifically. And, uh, as you might expect, he was a master of the Chinese martial art, Ba Ji Kuan. Uh, you know, fate even notes that he was called the master of the demon fist or the demon fist master. So he's, you know, very, very strong. Uh, historically, he was known as a spear user. He was called God Spear Lee also. So uh, his characterization as both a lancer and an assassin are correct. And the anecdote about his uh, noble phantasm is actually attested to him in the time. They said that for Li Xuan, he was such a master that no second strike was needed. Uh, he was a great teacher, advisor, etc. Uh, he worked with a master of certain martial arts, you know, uh, including one Fu Zhensong, who founded his own style of Bagua Zhang uh, and fought him to a draw. His students were uh, bodyguards for such figures such as Chairman Miao and Chiang Kai-shek. And other various figures. So, while again, there's not a super excess of detail in the historical context, he was a very famous, very talented martial artist who actually existed uh, in that period for like 70 years, you know, the late fate period, and did have a lasting impact on history. Strong martial particular, his students were pretty associated to this. He's still considered to be one of the greatest martial artists in the world. Uh, it is said that while he was not necessarily a... Uh, how would I say this? A killer by mentality, right? Like, he didn't go indiscriminately murkin' fools. Uh, he did kill quite a few people, either in martial arts matches or duels or in self-defense, uh, which caused various people to hold grudges. And supposedly he died at his old age when the relative of somebody he uh, killed poisoned his tea. So there you go. If you want to beat Li Xuan, just serve him poison tea. And that's... Uh, I know that's a little scarce, but that's really all I got with, like, uh, like busting out a scholarly library, which, uh, right now, not really a great thing to do. 
Not a great place to go hit up, hit up a library like that. You know? So let's talk about Fate. Now, this is actually kind of funny. So I talked about, right, like how, yes, he does actually use a spear. Uh, and yes, he does actually also is a martial arts master of a highly lethal martial arts technique that was very respected. Um, in Fate, uh, Li Xuan appeared several times before he appeared in FGO. He is a character in the Extraverse, appearing in Extra and Extella, Extella Link, etc., uh, where he is the young Li Xuan as an assassin. He also appears in the Imperial Holy Grail War uh, from Koha Ace, and I presume will eventually show up in Red Line if he hasn't already. Uh, but that is as a Lancer. That's right. In other Fate works, Old Man Lee is the Lancer, Young Lee is the Assassin. FGO completely flipped that. I don't know if that was a balanced thing or what, but they made Young Lee Shuen appear as a Lancer and Old Lee Shuen appear as an Assassin. Uh, obviously, he is a you know one of the major servant enemies in Extra and shows up as a supporting character in Extella series, and he is involved in that Koha Ace Redline type storyline that I mentioned. So he's he's got a fairly established history in Fate. Uh, he also internally appears in FG. FGO. The Lancer version shows up in America briefly for a, a few barbs traded with Skahawk and some other characters. And though you don't really know it at the time, if you're rolling for him, you hopefully know it because he came out later. Um, and you'll see him. So, spoilers. But the Royal Guard captain who appears in Lost Belt 3 is Old Man Lee. It's really hard to hide once his face appears on the banner. So yeah, that's him. Uh, in that case, his life was prolonged by Sage Arts, taught him by Chin Shi Wong to allow him to live like an extra hundred years or something so he can continue to train uh, the Royal Guards, which makes perfect sense given his real life history, and you know, get in there with some fun martial arts action. And that's basically that, you know, he's he's a fairly steady recurring character uh, both in FGO and in other Fate works. Uh, if you haven't seen him already, he will crop up in a couple of things in your uh, Sparrow's in report event, where he is being added on that second banner. And yeah, I guess there's not really a big reason not to just go into uh, the old mechanics there. So, Li Xuan Assassin is an assassin of the five star variety, a high rarity unit. Uh, his attack is okay. Uh, I mean, considering he's a single target hitter, it's not as high as the likes of Gramps, MHX, Jack, Kama. But it's not as low as some of those AoE tanky clockers like Semi and Cleo. So de very decently in the middle of the pack. Also, this made me realize that there's still only like two permanent assassins in FGO. And one of them is Osakabe Hime, who, while not a bad unit, is not a damage dealer. That's hilarious to me. Uh, now, unfortunately, as befitting the fact that he is a very old dude, uh, Assassin Lee is one of the lowest... Uh, HPs out of 5-star assassins. I believe he is actually literally the lowest. Below Jack and MHX. So that's a little sad that he doesn't get a super high offense out of that. But he does have some interesting interesting design choices and options available to him that kind of make up for that a little bit. So by default, he's a decent attacker. Not super heavy on the HP. That HP. Which is a little sad, but they'll they'll work on some of that stuff. So, uh, he has a very, very high NP gain because he only has two hit arts cards. But he's got two of them and a single quick card, which is four hits and a five hit extra. So, depending on how you do, like, Brave Chains and stuff, he will actually have a very, very robust NP gain because he's actually an arts type unit. So, watch out for that. But he does have two buster cards if you want to just lay out the damage where you can get some crits in, as you might expect from a, from a single hitter type assassin who is here to hit people. Pretty standard other stats. So, uh, he does have an amp to his NP. There's an upgrade coming later. It is no second strike, so there is only one strike. It is a single target arts. It has a chance to apply instant death, and it decreases the enemy's defense by 20% base level, up to 40% max level, uh, for three turns before the damage is dealt. So the enemy's defense is lowered, then he slaps him. Uh, and the upgrade will come, will give him more damage amp, and increase that instant death chance to 150, meaning that... With all the weird multipliers and math I don't want to get into right now, but you can look up on your own, and I have talked about before in other contexts, um, makes it a little bit more robust that instant death is going to proc. If enemies aren't resistant to it, there's a much better chance that it will happen. Now, most bosses and a lot of servants are pretty decently resistant or outright immune, so it's not that important, but it does allow you to do some interesting plays with certain farming or certain kinds of challenge quests. There are some quests which are 
or some enemies even, which are very deliberately set up that you want to try and hit them with instant death. So he can be very efficient at doing that if you want to try it, right? Uh, other than that, it's a pretty standard single target. I mean, the the increasing his damage multiplier through rank up slash interlude effects, as is pretty common with a lot of servants, is not out of the line because as an assassin, he does have that slightly reduced damage multiplier. So getting that extra damage on top of that with a single target is good because you want to make sure you do plenty of damage to pop somebody. Let's talk about skills. Pretty interesting. He has Chinese martial arts, Baji Kwan, with a lot of pluses. So this skill gives him one turn of critical strength up. The pretty standard for a one turn, it's 50 to 100%, and gives him Ignore Invincible for one turn. Great to do on an NP turn, like NPBB or NPAA, if you're trying to like spam some stuff, get some arts crits in. He will pierce invuls, and he will do big crit damage. And then he's got the extended version of Sphere Boundary. This increases his star absorption for one turn, gives him one turn of evade, and gives him crit stars. Uh, it's s slightly sad that it's only, it's on six turns, like it's got one turn up from his critical strength skill, so you gotta watch your timing, um, and it does have a one turn effect of a one turn evade with crit stars, so you gotta be careful, he's got his hard defense on also one of his utility skills, but still, star absorption on an assassin plus critical star gain flat, uh, especially considering that Li Xuan is not necessarily the best star generator on his own. Like, as an assassin, he has good star generation stats, but his buster hit cards are only one hit, and he only has one quick card. So you may get some back and forth on whether or not it actually procs. But still, very good for him to pop stars, get those stars, and get ready to damage. And also, you know, invades can't go wrong. And then lastly, yin-yang intersection gives him a 20 to 30% attack buff for one turn. Uh, and then it gives him a 10 to 20% attack buff for three turns. So you think to yourself, man, 30% is a little low for one turn. No, no. It's 50% total for one turn, but it's... 10 to 20% for three turns, so it's a charisma plus a, like, monstrous strength style buff. So, it gives him a, a big bit right now, and a little bit over multiple turns, and he gets one turn of debuff immunity. A debuff immunity one turn isn't the best, but depending on what you're doing, you may be, like, popping all of these on one go, and the debuff immunity is, is handy for some follow-ups if he's left vulnerable. Uh, honestly, I kind of feel like the defensive abilities are almost a little bit wasted, because they're all one turn on skills, which are also offensive, so you probably got to be careful about when you use his skills. But in general, the package of crit strength, crit absorb, uh, you know, up to 50% attack up on one turn and then 20% over multiple turns means that, hey, he's good at what you want him to be good at, which is you pop his NP and you punch people the heck out. Okay. Uh, his passives are pretty interesting. He has a unique passive called Veteran A+. This is a combination of territory creation and... Presence Concealment, so it ups his star generation by 8%, and it ups his arts effectiveness by 8%. So his arts cards will pop even harder, and his NP does that little bit extra damage. Uh, it's, uh, are Assassin's 0.9 or 0.95? Let me double check the multiplier really quick. Yeah, they're 0.9, so it's not quite enough to mean that his arts cards do the damage they should without the negative modifier for being an Assassin, but still, it's a positive modifier, okay? Uh, we can look at his skills and ascensions really quick. Uh, Ascension shouldn't be too much, but if you've spent all your bones, that 22 bones is a little bit of an ask. But it's not crazy, but he will need bells, which are new. Skill reinforcements, uh, he needs more bones and more stingers and also some bells, so watch out for that if you want to perfect those skills. That could be a little annoying, because bones are a very in-demand mat, and bells are new. So keep that in mind for your skill plans. Now, talking about comps and stuff, um... I mean, I think the obvious here is focus on arts or NP damage up, you know, formal craft, um, also critical up, I should say, probably crit before NP, um, but either works. So uh, another side is another one, that's arts plus crit damage, formal craft, just straight up arts damage, various type things like that. I don't know if you want to do like a dive to blue or a golden sumo kind of a thing, you know, because he doesn't have a, he doesn't have any battery on his own that's going to rely on supporters. Obviously, he could benefit from the arts up on Dive to Blue, but then you have to pad him with, like, a waiver in there uh, for now. Or uh, Caster Artoria when she comes out in a couple of years, or a year and a half-ish. Um, so, all in all, that's kind of the, the CE strategy you want to use. Um, I wouldn't go crazy with, like, a Hydra Knife or anything. Don't His instant death chance is already probably as high as you need it to be once he gets his NP buffed. So, I would say not focus on that. If if that's going to work, that's going to work, and if it's not going to work, it's not going to work. So focus on let making his arts cards and his NP hit harder, and when he crits, hitting harder. Um, 
ideally you're going to want to, you know, do big, 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 big damage so you can try and recycle a lot of NP, but you're probably not going to go crazy with that because he's very low hit counts on his arts. He is the no second strike guy. Um, to that end, in terms of support units, uh, I mean, the obvious, Tamamo right now, uh, she can give him healing, which he probably needs because his HP is fragile. She can give him the arts up he wants for big, big damage hits. And um, her NP not only generates charge, but also can reduce skill cooldown, which again, because uh, his second two skills are multi-stack hybrid offense defense, they're both at six turns, which can be a little annoying for your timing if you're trying to go fast, punch ass. Mm. Uh, and in future, in terms of the raw battery generation, I think it's Caster Artoria over Waver. But for now, Waver works out great because Waver has that crit amp skill and damage up and damage cut. So always consider your Waivers, guys. Uh, and of course, he has an Arts Servant, so you could focus uh, Caskill in there as a as a semi support. Get a Charisma, get an Arts up, get a Star Gen up, which I'm sure he uh, this Lee Shou and Assassin Man loves generating more stars. You can do some fun stuff, and just if you're looking for non standards, just anyone anyone in those ballparks, anybody who can buff some Arts stuff, anybody who can probably help him not die, uh, and in general, if they can give him critical enhancements, is another big thing. Like hypothetically, again, it's weird. Um, this is talking about how OP bullshit Merlin was for like the year, year, yeah, because it was the end of end of part one until year and a half. This guy didn't come out the second anniversary or third anniversary. Which one was it? Don't it doesn't matter. Uh, to talk about how bullshit Merlin was for that like year and a half slot or whatever. Um, Merlin's also not actually a bad pickup here because he gives Li Xuan free battery. He gives him healing. He generates stars with his NP. Um, he's got that team invul, and the. While the Buster is not his NP, the Li Xuan does have two Buster cards, which isn't that common among Assassins. Let me pull up and look at that. Like, the Saber-style deck is not very popular. Uh, in fact, I think Xuan is the only one who has it. Because Semiramis has a Caster deck. Hassan has a Gorilla deck. Most other Assassins either have a uh, almost Lancer-style Quick Buster deck or a something I associate with a lot of Archers, the Quick Hearts deck. Or probably the the original signature assassin deck, the three quicks, right? So he's the only one with this particular combo of cards. So um, if you only have a Merlin, you can use him with this. Like he'll he'll get that extra damage out of those busters, and you can do a you can do big crits with those buster cards if that's all the cards you got with with Old Man Lee. Um, and he's not gonna say no to that critical damage. I think the only support. Oddly enough, that doesn't super work with um, Old Man Lee, optimally anyway, is Cox Scotty, funnily enough. Just because um, her primary buff is to quick and quick strength, and Sh Shuen only has one, which is very weird for assassins. Uh, even then, though, if you have a five-star support caster, they can do something. But optimally, like I said, I would put the arts ones first, then generics like Waver. And even then, if you want to flex, you can probably do some weird stuff with... Merlin, how Scotty got a 50% battery if you got her skills left and has a defense down skill. It's not, like, the worst. But um, he's not about high hit counts, so don't think necessarily about, like, overkill regen spamming. You don't need a second strike. You hit this guy once, he's dead. Boom. So, let's talk rarity. So, uh, this guy's actually pretty frequently on raid-ups. So, he'll be here for the Sparrow Inn Part 2 coming up. Uh... He will be here for the Caldea Boys Collection um, pickups later this year, the White Day, because he is a male servant. He will have his own day. Uh, he will have a special rate up on the Interlude campaign because he has an Interlude, so he will be on. He will be one of the five stars available on that banner. He will be available for uh, fourth anniversary on a special rate up. He will be available for White Day in the future again, male servant. And we'll show up on the rerun of Guda Guda Final Hanoji, of our Final Hanoji is a lie, um, on certain rotation in the rerun banner, because he is technically kind of sort of a Guda Guda type guy. Uh, and actually, if you want to talk about bonuses, he's a bonus character in a lot of Guda Guda type stuff, like the um, Imperial Capital rerun and both versions of Final Hanoji. And also the rerun of Seraph coming up this year. So, uh, yeah, they definitely leverage a lot of that lore and stuff he's got going on to tuck him in there. Uh, and I think it's everything. Like I said, I don't want to wax super long on this if I don't have to. Um, if you, unlike me, don't have a good single-target high-level assassin, uh, he's very effective. He's got that arts-flavored package, if you've just picked up a Tamo, for instance, on the raid-up, and has some 
good choices to his execution of attacks and stuff. Got some strong strategies. His skills are pretty powerful. Watch the cooldowns. They're a little long. Sometimes you might have an annoying thing where you have to waste your debuff immunity to give yourself your big attack bonus. Whatever. Lots of servants have that problem. He's still going to be very effective on target. And because of that high instant death chance, there will be certain, like I said, there will be certain challenge type quests or awkward story quests where you can just be like, wait, I can just instant kill that guy? Oh, that's easy. And like I said, he'll be a bonus servant in the future on a couple of things. So consider him. That's it for that. I think I will be seeing you guys in a couple of weeks for a, well, maybe, I don't know, raise the roof if you want a wanted me. Those videos haven't traditionally done very well, the four-star ones. So uh, the four-stars added on rerun anyway. So let me know if you want a detail there. I'll, I'll try it at least once. And then stay tuned for uh, Valentine's because Lucky is going to be taking over Wanted and talking about Murasaki Shikabu. I'll just have to make sure to uh, shoot him one of my grid assets. All right. Uh, I think that's everything, guys, so I'm going to wrap up. All right. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And, of course, you can, as always, hit us up on our Discord. That link is, as always, in the video description and on our channel page. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel to get more Let's Talk FGO Wanted, more of our flagship podcast, FGO, Let's Talk FGO, and lots of other little things that we'll be doing over the year. Fun stuff. You can also hit that bell for notifications so you always know when we post a new video or when we stream. Very important. Great stuff. You can join our channel by hitting that little join button as well. And, of course, like I said at the front of the show, you can consider supporting us on Patreon. You could have gotten access to this episode early. And you get lots of other little stuff like voting and topics, access to audio, etc. And it really helps support us. So I will see you next time. And remember, no second video. Strike. <laughs>